Hey everybody, this is Sebastian with Docker Images MD. If you've previously seen our video on poor cute Timmy for PCT, this is the follow-up video, Acute Intermittent Werewolf for Acute Intermittent Porphyria or AIP. Now we start off here with these two werewolves. They're obviously adorable, they're obviously poor, as we've seen in the PCT video, but here we're talking about AIP, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing to talk about is the enzyme that is deficient, and that's porphobilinogen deanimase, or PBGD. Now this is an autosomal dominant disease, and as we can see here, we have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich standing for PB and J, very similar to PBG deanimase, and that can be seen by the fact that on top of our animated peanut butter and jelly sandwich, we actually have a deanimated version, or just an actual picture of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And once again, one of our reoccurring symbols is the add sign in the background to stand for the fact that this is autosomal dominant. Next, we're going to look over here to the upper left corner, and we're going to see a cage. And this cage stands for the accumulated substrates that built up due to the PB&J, or PBGD, deficiency. And the two intermediates that are going to build up first are another set of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and these stand for PBG, or porphobrilinogen. And the second one is represented by this mosque here, and this stands for ALA. Next, we're going to go to the symptoms that present with AIP. And the symptoms that present uh, are oftentimes referred to with the five P's, which is one of the best mnemonics. I've seen for this, and so we're going to go over those first. The first P is polyneuropathy, and that's going to be presented by this werewolf right here, who was originally grabbing at the cage, and you'll notice that he's now chewing on his arm. That's because polyneuropathy is most common in this disease in the arms and the shoulder regions. Next, we're going to move on over here to this werewolf, who's clearly changing from a human to a wolf. And you'll notice this colorful background around his head, and that stands for the psychological disturbances that occurs with this disease. Moving on down to our third werewolf, or fourth werewolf, and we'll see he's clutching his stomach, and this stands for painful abdomen. Now this is an extremely important part for PCT, and it's one of the common presenting factors with a person with PCT during a symptomatic episode. Oftentimes questions will cue you into something with a negative a uh, laparotomy or some sort of exploratory surgery for abdominal pain that finds nothing. That's a good time to begin thinking of AIP. We'll move on over here to the werewolf laying on his back. And you'll notice that this werewolf has once again peed his pants. Now this urine coming out of him is yellow, but once it's exposed to light it turns this, the port wine color and we can see the wine glass pouring onto it and that's because another one of our peas is port wine colored urine. And this only occurs when the urine is exposed to light. Now we're going to move on to precipitating factors. The precipitating factors to be most aware of are drugs. The main ones you'll see are going to be barbiturates as well as anti-seizure medications except for bromides. Barbiturates are oftentimes the cue for causing the PCT episode. Additionally alcohol as well as starvation at the bottle of alcohol here, and werewolves in general, when they become werewolves, are incredibly hungry and starving to go eat something. Next, we're going to talk about a few more symptoms. One is autonomic disturbances. We can see this werewolf in the upper left is sweating a little bit, and this is to remind us of autonomic disturbances. Additionally, uh, the werewolf laying on his back, I completely forgot why I drew him on his back, and then it hit me. He stands for dementia. And lastly, how it's treated. And we've got this obese child laying on his back. He's clearly become a victim to one of these werewolves. And he stands for the treatment for AIP. And that's glucose. Uh, that's why he's drawn as an obese child to stand for the glucose. And heme, and you can see the blood all around him. And what heme does is heme inhibits ALA synthase. And that's represented by the piece of the mosque in this child's hand. And that's all there is. Once again, I'm Sebastian with Dr. Images MD. Have a productive day.